Brothers and sisters, welcome to Mission Joven. Happy Sunday to you. Thank you for your feedback online in the YouTube um, channel about last week's programs. Thank you for your positive feedback. I am very delighted to know that you enjoy the program and that you are faithful, faithfully ver watching the show every Sunday. Bienvenidos al programa de Misión Joven. Estoy muy feliz de saber de que de lo que han escrito en el canal de YouTube del programa de Misión Joven y les agradezco de corazón su fidelidad para el programa domingo tras domingo. Tonight's program is about the second word of Jesus on the cross. Tonight's topic is about the second word of Jesus on the cross. But before we do that, we want to start with the song of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. En el Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you give us once again in Mission Joven to speak about the teaching of Jesus on the cross. Though he said a few words, those words were, were words of wisdom. They were wisdom indeed, Lord, because it has a profound message, a deep message of what it's like to be a Christian, especially in today's world. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ on the cross, because by his blood, by his passion and resurrection, he, he gave us life and he opened the gates of, of heaven to us. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the plan of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to be alive, to be here tonight, to be able to proclaim your word, especially tonight when we talk about the second word of Jesus on the cross. We pray today for, our Pope, for Pope Francis and all the clergy around the world, for bishops and cardinals, Lord, archbishops, for the priesthood, for the vocation of priesthood, for the vocation of religious life. We pray tonight, Lord, and we pray tonight for our viewers who Sunday to Sunday they connect in Mission Joven to receive your word into their hearts so they can apply in the daily life. A special, a special blessing, Lord, for the souls of purgatory. We pray for them tonight. And we pray for Reggie and Drew who make this program possible to go up in the air Sunday to Sunday. Esta noche oramos grandemente. Le damos gracias a Dios por el don de la vida el poder estar aquí en esta noche en Misión Joven para poder proclamar su palabra y poder dar el mensaje de la segunda palabra de Jesús en la cruz, que fueron palabras de sabiduría, un mensaje profundo para cada persona que es cristiana el día de hoy, sobre todo en los tiempos que estamos viviendo. Te agradecemos, Señor, por la llamada a tus, a tus sacerdotes, a tus obispos, por el Papa Francisco, oramos por los cardenales, por los obispos, sobre todo por los arzobispos, y sobre todo por la vocación al sacerdocio, a la vida religiosa. Una oración también especial por la sama del purgatorio, Señor. Y sobre todo te agradecemos porque domingo tras domingo haces posible que nuestros, nuestros televidentes se conecten con, la, con tu palabra y la reciban en el corazón y la puedan aplicar a su vida diaria. Damos gracias también a Reggie y a Andrew porque hace, hace posible que este programa salga en el aire domingo tras domingo. We are, and for that, Lord, we invite our mother, the, the Virgin Mary, because when she comes, comes, comes alone, her husband, who is the Holy Spirit. Invitamos a la Virgen María, que viene con su esposo, el Espíritu Santo. Y decimos, y tú sabes, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres de todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hope of death. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's program is about the second word of Jesus on the cross. El programa esta noche es la segunda palabra de Jesús en la cruz. Vamos a comenzar el día de hoy con el Evangelio según San Juan. El Evangelio según San Juan, capítulo 14, versículo del 1 al 6. El Evangelio según San Juan, capítulo 14, versículo del 1 al 6. Gaspolo, Gaspolo John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself 
so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know the, where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord prays to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Versículo según San Juan, capítulo 14, versículo 1 al 6. No se turbe vuestro corazón. Creéis en Dios, creed también en mí. En la casa de mi padre hay muchas mansiones. Si no, no os habría dicho que voy a prepararlos un lugar. Y cuando haya ido y los haya preparado un lugar, volveré y os tomaré conmigo para que donde esté yo, ese es también ustedes. Y ya sabes el camino a donde yo voy. Le dijo Tomás, Señor, no sabemos a dónde vas. ¿Cómo podemos saber el camino? Respondió Jesús, yo soy el camino, la verdad y la vida. Nadie va al Padre sino por mí. Palabra del Señor, gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. In this reading, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, Jesus have already proclaimed his passion and resurrection to his apostles. Jesus knew from the, Jesus knows, he, he knows everything about his apostles. He knows everything about the people that follow him. And therefore, when he, he said to, he reaffirmed to his Jewish fellows that continue to believe in the Father, but now to believe in him. So Jesus is, is telling them, is really sharing with them that the faith that they deposited on the Father, they must deposit that faith on Jesus himself. And he, he said, he said to them, he said to them that he's going to a place where he's going to prepare a dwelling place for everyone who believes in Jesus. For everyone who believes in Jesus, he's going to have a, a dwelling place, a place of rest, a place of wonders, a place that the human being can imagine what it's like to be in paradise. We must, we, we may portray images, but our wisdom, our human wisdom can go that far. However, the wisdom of God is bigger than that. And he said to them, I'm going to find a dwelling place for you. However, I will come back again. So Jesus says, not only I'm leaving soon, but don't despair. I will return. I will return. It's a promise of Jesus. Jesus is saying that wherever he goes, is he, he's there to have a place for each one of us. Jesus is inviting us to come to his bosom. He's inviting us to come to his heart. He's inviting you and I to come closer to him. To be a friend of him. And therefore Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, no one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is saying that to his fellow Jewish followers that he is the way. He is the way. He is that, he is that route directly that will take them to the Father. Jesus is telling them, I am the truth and the life. The truth. What the truth does to the human being, it brings peace. It brings joy knowing that our hearts are completely cleansed because we choose to speak with the truth. Because in our hearts dwells Jesus' heart, Jesus himself. And he said, yeah, and I'm the life. So Jesus brings life 
to you and I. Anyone who comes to Jesus will eventually realize that he is the Son of God, that he has prepared a dwelling place for us, that his sacrifice means, mean, meant for the redemption of the human beings, but more importantly, he is the way to the Father. You, in, any, in, any, in any Catholic event, a question is always posed, a question is, is always uh, asked this, this, place, this way, who wants to go to heaven? And anybody raises their hand, usually. That is the usual response. Anybody wants to go to heaven? You sure? Why not? But then when the question, the next question says, who wants to carry his cross? Many hands are down. To go to the Father, we must emulate the example of Jesus. Jesus came to serve. Jesus came to teach. Jesus came to perform mighty miracles. But on his way to Calvary, his way to Calvary, Jesus is preparing his soul for his passion and resurrection. Jesus is setting, is setting the stage for all believers that we know that someday, by the mercy of God, by his precious by, by, by his precious grace, we will reunite with him. But in order to reunite with him, we must repent. We must confess our sins. We must realize that we are human beings, that we are in need of Jesus, that we need him in our life so that he can lead the way and then we can live a truthful life and therefore feel alive feel that finally no more pain no more worries because though we may still be in this world we are we our souls our minds and our spirit know that there's a better place for us and we cannot wait to get there but of course everything goes according to the will of god so thomas asked him lord Show us the way. That means that Thomas, when he heard the word of Jesus, his heart was completely touched by the word of Jesus. Because when Jesus spoke, those were words of wisdom, but they were words coming down from the Holy Spirit that dwelt in Jesus. And whoever heard the word of God by the, by the mouth of Jesus was completely touched and had to make a decision. Do I follow Jesus or do I follow my only way? Do I feel like I have to do my own will and see what happens next? Or do I take a step back and follow Jesus who knows the way, the better way for, for me, who knows what's best for me, who loves me and adores me because I am his creation. Lord, God created each one of us at his own image. And out of love, God wants us to return back to him but through his son. Because his son is the one who opened the gates of heaven for the human beings. But it's up to us to make the decision. We want to go to heaven, sure. But we don't want to go to tribulation. That's not how it works. Without our cross, there is no resurrection. Without our cross, there is no resurrection. So my dear friends, as we open the topic tonight for the second word of Jesus, now Jesus, Jesus has set a stage for us to, come to understand his enduring love for us. That he went through a lot, he went through a, a, a hack of a sacrifice a difficult, a difficult moment for us to watch, for us to meditate on. But he did it out of love because he is the truth, he is the way, he is the truth and the life. En este capítulo bíblico vemos que Jesús le habla a sus amigos, a sus, a sus compañeros judíos y le dice, yo entiendo que ustedes creen en Dios y sigan adelante, 
pero también crean en mí. Jesús está, está, por, está, por, está poniendo un precedente de que para llegar al cielo, para llegar al Padre, solamente es a través de Él. Porque Él es el Hijo de Dios, el Amado de Dios. Él es el Mesías. Jesús le había comunicado a sus apóstoles que Él tenía que padecer. Y que ya llegaba el momento de partir pronto. Pero que Él se iba a preparar un lugar especial para cada uno de nosotros, para, la, para toda la humanidad. El regalo de Dios es que Jesús prepara un lugar para ti y para mí. Y podemos imaginarnos cómo hacer ese lugar. Podemos hasta dibujarlo en una imagen. Pero nuestra sabiduría humana puede llegar hasta un límite. En cambio, la sabiduría de Dios es ilimitada. No tiene fronteras. No hay barreras. Y Jesús les dice, voy a prepararles un lugar a cada uno de ustedes. Un lugar para ti y un lugar para mí. Y en ese momento, en ese momento, vemos que Jesús nos está invitando a ser parte de Él. A compartir con Él. A ser amigos de Él. A estar en su eterna presencia. Porque Él nos ama grandemente. Y de repente Jesús dice, a una palabra muy hermosa, le dice, yo soy el camino, la verdad y la vida. Jesús es el camino al Padre. Nadie puede entrar al cielo sino a través de Jesús. Jesús prepara el camino. Él sabe el camino para usted, para mí. Él sabe lo que mejor nos conviene. Dice que Él es la verdad. O sea que en Él no hay mentiras, en Él no hay farsas, en lo de Jesús es real, es fiel, es verdadero. No se cuestiona, sin cuestionamiento, porque es el Hijo de Dios. Y sin embargo dice, yo soy el camino, soy la verdad. Jesús nos invita a vivir en la verdad de Él, a ser parte de Él, a compartir con Él. Y lo dice que Él también es la vida. Él que nos da la vida. Que cuando encontremos finalmente la, la vida, volvemos a revivir, a ser felices, a vivir en paz, a encontrar esa felicidad espiritual que tanto buscábamos y que ahora podemos descansar sabiendo de que aunque nos pasen muchas cosas en este mundo, porque vivimos en este mundo, nuestra esperanza no está puesta aquí, sino está puesta allá en el cielo con Jesús. La vida eterna. El regalo de Dios para el ser humano. Dios desea que todos sus hijos, hijas, vuelvan a Él. Pero Dios no te fuerza a eso. Nos invita, nos pregunta. Y hay que tomar la decisión. Si deseo vivir una vida realmente espiritual en Cristo para llegar al Padre, o si deseo vivir la vida terrenal y someterme a las consecuencias que venga. Sin embargo, nos dice Jesús que cuando dijo esas palabras, Tomás, al escuchar la palabra de Jesús, fue como un fuego, como, como si fuera un remolino de, de poder, de fuego que salió de la boca de Jesús por el Espíritu Santo que le tocó el corazón a Tomás y dijo, Señor, muéstrame el camino. El camino. Jesús le dice, yo soy el camino. Yo soy, yo soy Dios, yo soy hijo de Dios. Yo, yo soy lo que le dijo Dios a Moisés en el monte Sinaí. Yo soy el que soy. Yo soy el camino. Le está diciendo, Jesús está hablando a Tomás que él es un ser divino. Jesús es un ser divino. Y que él es el que va a ser posible la apertura de las puertas del cielo para la entrada, de la entrada de la humanidad. Pero, por supuesto, en cada evento católico, en cada evento social católico, se hace siempre la misma pregunta, ¿cuántos quieren ir al cielo? Y todos levantan la mano. Y después, la pregunta siguiente es, ¿cuántos desean cargar su cruz? Y ya no levantan la mano. No digo todos, un grupo de personas. Porque no han entendido que sin cruz no hay resurrección. Si decimos que yo sigo el camino, si decimos que Jesús es el camino, la verdad y la vida, tengo que emular el ejemplo de mi maestro. 
Yo tengo que pasar por momentos también de tribulación. Pasar por momentos difíciles, de dificultades. Porque esas dificultades nos preparan para tener una, una verdadera resurrección. ¿Y qué mejor ahora que estamos en tiempo de cuaresma? Estamos en la segunda semana de cuaresma. Que es preparar el corazón. Caminar con Cristo. Acompañar a Cristo. Para ese momento difícil de la vida de Jesús. De entregar su vida por la redención humana. Jesús nos prepara un lugar. ¿Estamos listos para recibirlo? Todo es por gracia de Dios. Pero hay que hacerlo con un corazón arrepentido. Un corazón realmente que quiere estar en Dios. Y qué mejor a través de la confesión de nuestros pecados. Ya daremos eso más tarde. Pero Jesús nos dice que es el camino, la verdad y la vida. Muchos dicen to Thomas, I am the way. I am is the same response that, gave, that God said to Moses on Mount Sinai. Uh, uh, Sinai. When he says, Lord, when I go to the people, to the people of, of, of Israel, what should I say your name is? And he says, I am who I am. So Jesus is saying to Thomas, I am divine. And because I'm divine, I have the power to open the gates of heaven to the whole human race. Not only that, I have a place just for you. Ready for you. Powerful words of our Messiah. Amen. Our next reading is from the from the is, is Apostle Paul. As we as we as we um, enter the topic of the second word of Jesus on the cross, we're going to enter the next reading, which is Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Vamos a entrar a la carta de los romanos, en el capítulo 8, versículo 35 al 39. Romanos 8, 35 al 39. What will, separate, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Vamos a los Romanos 8, 35 al 39. ¿Quién nos separará del amor de Cristo? ¿La tribulación? ¿La angustia? ¿La persecución? ¿El hambre? ¿La desnudez? ¿Los peligros? ¿La espada? Como dice la Escritura, por ti nos matan cada día nos tratan como a ovejas de matadero. Pero en todo esto salimos más que vencedores gracias a aquel que nos amó. Pues estoy seguro de que ni la muerte, ni la vida, ni los ángeles, ni los principados, ni lo presente, ni lo futuro, ni las potestades, ni la altura, ni la profundidad, ni cualquier otra criatura podrá separarnos del amor de Dios manifestado en Cristo Jesús Señor nuestro. Palabra de Dios, te alabamos, Señor. What will separate us from the love of God? That's a good question. For the Christian point of view, who lives, who live the life in prayer, who attend sacred communion, who attend tends the sacrament of reconciliation, who sits for an hour before Jesus Christ 
in the monstrance. For Christians who do service to, to, to their neighbor. For Christians who are every, every, everywhere helping others and bringing people back to the church, not by words, but because of their own testimony. It says, what will separate them from the love of God? Nothing. There is nothing out there that could ever, ever separate us from the love of God. We love him so much that we want to be closer to him because Jesus already prepared a place for us. And who, who, is, the, who is the divine, the divine power that allows us or who that reminds, that reminds us about the teachings of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, we enter into a mysterious relationship of love with God. We realize who Jesus is. We realize how much we need him. We realize about his sacrifice. And we realize that it is through him that we will be able to get to heaven. And therefore, no matter what goes on in our lives, on earth, anguish, distress, persecution in our families in this in this in this world our christian faith is always questioned it says famine famine or nakedness or even the sword what paul is talking about is that the sword is because in the times of paul the Romans, the, the Roman soldiers, the Roman soldiers, they carry the sword. So, if you just, if they, if, if there was some sort of um, uh, rebellion against the Roman law, well, what the Roman emperor will say is, slain all Jewish people, and they will slay them with the sword. And that's why Paul is saying, even the sword or famine. Paul is talking about one of the one, one of the um, uh, is when the, um, when 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 God sent a different different things on the people of Israel to free them from Pharaoh. Yes, famine. There was famine on, in Egypt. So Paul is saying, this flesh is going to go away. But the love of God is what I what I seek for, what I look for every day. It's what my soul wishes to be every day. And it says, because because of your sake, we're being slain all day. So every day, the Apostle Paul had to decide, do I continue to follow Jesus or do I deviate my beliefs to get along with the Roman law? Hmm. Saint Paul was so much in love with Jesus that he he let nothing out there to even to even to even set his faith on trial. Saint Paul knew who he was following, and we had to and what he had to endure for the love of God. The same today. We see a lot of stuff on the news. We see a lot of stuff that goes around us in our families. We see that in every community, there's, there, there, will, there will be always the, the human, the human side, the human behavior will always, always be there to be an obstacle for people to get to Jesus because it's part of life. However, we have to make a decision who we follow. And if our eyes are set on Jesus, we are to follow. He is the truth, the way, and the life. So I need to follow Jesus. No matter what goes around me. Because I, I wish his love. I want to be around Jesus. I love him so much. I want to be with him. And that's why Paul is saying here, I am convinced. Paul is saying, I am convinced. The question is, are we convinced? Are you and I convinced that Jesus is the, is the way, the truth, and the life? 
that Jesus died for our sins, that Jesus opened the gates of heaven for you and I? Are we convinced? Or what more needs to happen before we get convinced? But for Christians, when we are convinced, we say here, need neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things or future things will ever separate us from God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's, that's, that's very deep. That means that's saying that as long as we continue to be on, on this early life, we're going to face all types of tribulations. We're going to face challenges. Our faith will be put to the test. But it's up to God, but through His grace and the Holy Spirit, that we continue to set our eyes fixed on Jesus and that we continue to do the works of God around His people. Because that will conquer lives, souls back to the Lord. It's our through testimony. It's our it's through the through the through the study of the Word of God. Through the letters of the magisterium, through the traditions of the apostles, that we come to realize the magnificent, the magnificent power of God and how much He has created for you and I and how much He loves us. Do we are, are we convinced of God's love? That's a very good question. Or do we blame God for everything that goes wrong in our lives? We are blaming the wrong person. We're blaming God. He's not to be blamed for my sins. He's not to be blamed when I take away, when I take away the ingenuity of somebody. When I take away something that is so precious from somebody. When I, instead of me helping that person to come to back to the church, I help that person to stay away from the church. So therefore, it's got to be blamed. No, my dear friends. It says here, no principalities, nor, nor angels, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, no height, no depth. So nothing, nothing out there can ever separate us from the love of God. No matter what happens. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he went to the cross. He did not let the fact that he was being, he was slain, he was um abused with words people were spitting on his face people were pulling his beard people were pushing him around so that he will fall on the ground that he will be mocked on he did not let the Jewish authorities to, to be an obstacle to the plan of his father which was to, to redeem the whole human race not even the words of Pilate. That is the example of the master. And that, my dear friends, is powerful. Vemos aquí que dice que nada nos separará del amor de Cristo. Ni la angustia. O sea, que todo, la persona, todo lo que pasemos en esta vida, este estrés, angustia, discrepancia, división, que seamos calumniados, Nada nos puede separar del amor de Cristo. Nada, ni nadie. ¿Estamos convencidos de esto? San Pablo dice, yo estoy convencido. ¿Estamos convencidos? ¿Qué más tiene que pasar para que estemos convencidos? Pero aquella persona que es cristiana y fiel al Señor en su sacramento de reconciliación, en su comunión, en su oración eucarística, en el estudio de la palabra de Dios, en la, leyendo las cartas del magisterio, haciendo la tradición apostólica, está tan convencida de la omnipotencia de Dios que ha creado la humanidad para que algún día nos reunamos con Él de vuelta. 
pero que envió a su Hijo único para redimir la raza humana. Dice aquí que hasta que, ¿se acuerdan que vivieron las, las plagas a Egipto? Que fue la, que fue la hambruna, pues San Pablo lo, lo, aquí lo menciona. La desnudez, el sentirme cansado, agotado, con sed, con hambre, sin nada, pero con la fuerza de Dios en mí, o sigue la espada. Si se recuerdan, cuando había una rebelión judía contra los romanos, los romanos a todos le pasaban espada. Entonces, eran tiempos difíciles para San Pablo, pero estaba convencido de que siguiendo a Jesús, no mirando lo que pasaba a su alrededor, lo podía alejar del amor de Dios, porque se había enamorado de Cristo Jesús, porque estaba convencido que Jesús es el Mesías, el Hijo de Dios. Estaba convencido San Pablo. Y esta noche el Señor nos invita a usted y a mí a saber de que aunque estamos en este mundo pasando dificultades, estamos aún felices porque estamos sin Cristo Jesús y esa, esa felicidad no te la puede quitar nadie de nada del mundo. Esta piel se va algún día, se va a acabar. Pero lo que no se va a acabar es el amor de Dios para la humanidad. Y se nos invita en esta noche a pensar como San Pablo. Y lo repito aquí. Que ni la muerte ni la vida, ni los ángeles, ni los principados, ni lo presente ni lo futuro, ni las potestades, ni la altura, ni la profundidad, ni cualquier otra criatura, podrá separarnos del amor de Dios manifestado en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Ninguna otra criatura. Nada. Tenemos que tomar una decisión, hermanos. Que Jesús siguió el plan de Dios. No se ridiculizó. Jesús le, le, le jalaban las barbas, le escupían, lo empujaban para que sacara del suelo y se golpeara. Pero él no permitió que ni siquiera la calumnia ni, 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 ni Pilato se, se, fuera un obstáculo a la redención humana porque es el plan de Dios. Jesús no permitió eso. Y entonces, eso es un ejemplo para usted, para mí, que usted ni yo tampoco podemos permitir que nada nos separe del amor de Cristo aunque se vea algo difícil y fuerte, tenemos que abrazar la cruz con amor y dejar que Cristo Jesús reine nuestros corazones. And finally, we get to the reading of tonight's topic. We're going to topic tonight is, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. We're going to proclaim the gospel of Luke. Chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 29, verses 39 to 43. Vamos a proclamar el Evangelio según San Lucas. En el capítulo 23, versículo 39 al 43. Muy bien. One of the criminals, hanging with Jesus, kept deriding him and saying, Are you, not, are you not the Messiah? Say yourself an ass. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord prays to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Evangelio según San Lucas, capítulo 23, versículo 39 al 43. Capítulo 23, versículo 39 al 43. Uno de los malhechores colgados les insultaba, ¿no eres tú el Cristo? Pues sábate a ti a nosotros. Pero el otro le increpó, ¿es que no temes a Dios tú que sufres la misma condena? Y nosotros con razón, porque nos lo hemos merecido con nuestros hechos. En cambio, este nada malo ha hecho. Y le pedí a Jesús, acuérdate de mí cuando vengas con tu reino. Jesús le contestó, te aseguro que hoy estarás conmigo en el paraíso. Para el Señor, gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. I love this meditation of the word of Jesus. 
In this second word, Jesus promises the hope of the afterlife of paradise. At the Last Supper in John's Gospel, Jesus tells his apostles, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you. What does your place look like? I'm sure it will be per a perfect fit because Jesus has selected it. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. From the moment of our conception, God has been inviting us into relationship. As we look back over our life and ponder these moments, we can see the presence of God. His intervention on our journey home. I want to draw your attention to the three responses we see in this short section. One, the response of the sinner to, to his sin. The response of the sinner to his Savior. And the response of the Savior to the sinner. One thief knew he deserved to die. He had broken the law and now was paying the penalty. The other, even in, in the midst of dying, joined the mob at the foot of the cross in mocking, cursing, and blaspheming the stranger in the middle. But the penitent thief, we have none of it. And here we see the sinner's response to his own sin. He acknowledged that. It is called agreeing with God that we are wrong in what we have done. And he is right for requiring us something better. And so the broken thief rebuked the other. Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. That was the sinner's response to his own sin. Acknowledgement. We must all, every one of us, first do that. It is called making a good confession. Not casually confessing sin to God, but being sorry for having sinned. Now, let's look at the sinner's response to the Savior when he did what everyone must do, not just once, but repeatedly in their life. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Here the broken and humble thief recognized Jesus had a kingdom. He recognized Jesus was Lord in his kingdom. And the thief wanted to be there with him. Really, the thief responds to his own sin and to the Savior was not too dissimilar to King David's response to the Savior after his sin with Bathsheba. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your, hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. This was the Psalm 51. If you are Catholic, you recognize how close David's prayer is to the act of contrition. We sometimes say in the confessional, and listen to this because exactly what we say in the confessional before the priest, when we say, when we say all our sins, this is what we read, it's called the act of contrition. Is similar to the prayer of David. It says the following. Oh my God, I am hardly sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments. 
but most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sing no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. That's what we said in the act of contrition. The thief's, the thief's response was first to acknowledge his sins, to own up to them. His second response was to turn to the saviors in repentance, to ask for mercy and forgiveness. Repentance does amazing things in and for our soul. It lifts us to where Jesus hangs on the cross face to face with his nailed and bloodied body, brutalized because of our sins. Repentance frees us from ourselves, from our arrogance that binds us to eternal death. It teaches us humility and unveils for us our fleeting mortality and our desperate need for an eternal Savior. Repentance bring us into an intimate relationship with the King of Glory, reserved only for the penitent. And now we see the response of the Savior to the penitent sinner who pleaded, Jesus remember me, and Jesus responded, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. How often did the Lord Jesus say to others, come follow me? Lots of times. His offer is embedded from one end of the gospel to the other. And oh, how I do want to follow him. And I will assume you do too. But how then it is often the case that you and I get distracted from following him? Like little children, we are always distracted by life around us. And we take our eyes off the shepherd and daily in the distractions. This is, my friend, a true teaching that shows us that there were three cases when the, the good thief, first of all, he repented before the Lord. He recognized his deeds and was asking for forgiveness. He saw, that he saw Jesus and he recognized his creator. He recognized him as a son of God. He recognized that he needed to be with Jesus. And he asked, he pleaded, he implored, he said, Lord, remember me when, I come, when you come into your kingdom. He recognized that God, Jesus, is king. That he has a kingdom. And what is that kingdom? the place that he has prepared for you and I. Not only did he, the, the good thief repented, but he asked for forgiveness. He asked for God's mercy. He did not let his arrogance come in the way. He did not let his suffering be a motive to, to get away from Jesus. On the contrary, while he was nailed on the cross, Next to the Savior, it was the perfect opportunity for him to offer his soul back to the Father. All he wanted was mercy. And exactly what he asked for. And the response of Jesus to the sinner. Jesus looked at him. Jesus looked at, us, at the good thief. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross? With all the pain, his body is torn into pieces, blood all over, his bones are exposed, his lungs are exposed. He can barely breathe. He's, 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 he, he's pushing his body up to be able to breathe. He's in total pain. He's got like, the crowns of thorns. He has the biggest headache ever. Worse than a migrant. And Jesus, out of love, looks at the thief and says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus makes the effort to find you where you are. 
So no matter what we have done in our lives, the second word of Jesus invites us to repent, to, to actually examine our conscience and go to the sacrament of reconciliation and share everything that we've done to receive the God's, God's forgiveness through his priest, through Jesus himself, because the priest is in, in, in Christ's uh, person. We call it in persona Christi. When we go to confession, it's an act of humility. And tonight, Jesus is inviting you and I to repent and to come back to him. To go back to the, to, to the Lord. To recognize Christ as our Lord and Messiah. To go back to adoration, to, to the sacrament of adoration. Because what we do is, when you are sitting before the, the monster, before the hall, before the sacrament, the holy sacrament, before the sacred host, it's exactly what the thief was doing. I'm looking at Jesus, and Jesus is looking at me. That's what we do there. We contemplate Jesus, and Jesus is contemplating us out of love. Tonight is the day the Lord has made for you and I to take a step back, recognize that we have made, that we have our wrongs, but that it's time to go and confess and repent so that we can be free and feel alive again and revive again and to reunite with God's love because God is love and he wants to forgive you. He wants to forgive me. It's a matter of us making that decision through the sacrament of reconciliation. I promise, I promise you that when you go there, you will come out completely lightweighted, completely excited, happy, because we receive, receive the forgiveness of God. God bless. En esta lectura vemos aquí que hay tres respuestas en el ladrón bueno. Primeramente su arrepentimiento de corazón. Luego su, él implora misericordia. Y es justamente, es justamente lo que hacemos cuando vamos al sacramento de reconciliación. Cuando pedimos perdón a Dios a través de la, del sacerdote que es en persona Cristi y decimos, y decimos esta hermosa oración que siempre decimos lo siguiente, decimos así. Me encanta esa lectura que dice así. Oh Dios, estoy en mi corazón verdaderamente triste porque te he ofendido y detesto mis pecados porque no quiero llegar, no quiero recibir los, los castigos justos. Pero estoy más arrepentido porque sé que te he ofendido. A ti, mi Dios, que eres lo mejor y, y merezco todo mi amor. Y me dices todo mi amor. Y de ahora, de ahora mente, finalmente resuelvo con la ayuda de tu gracia de no pe de pecar no más y de evitar toda ocasión de pecado. La misma oración que hizo el, el rey David, que pidió perdón por su, por su pecado, que se arrepintió de corazón y dijo, Señor, lávame con hisopo, lávame con tu gracia, porque tú me puedes a mí perdonar. Y le dice David a Dios, y no me apartes de tu presencia. Y sobre todo, no, 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 no te lleves tu espíritu, tu santo espíritu de mí. El ladrón dice, perdóname Señor porque he pecado. Reconozco mis faltas, yo merezco estar aquí, pero tú eres santo. Y como tú eres santo, yo reconozco que tú me puedes perdonar. Y Jesús en ese momento de dolor, con sus, con sus llagas, todo clavado, sin aire, que se, que se empujaba así para poder respirar, lo mira con tanta ternura al ladrón bueno y le dice, en esta noche estarás conmigo en el paraíso. Y eso es lo que hacemos usted y yo en el sacramento de reconciliación, donde pedimos perdón a Dios, donde se nos devuelve la alegría en espiritualmente hablando. Y somos otra vez li livianos, somos felices, estamos alegres. Y volvemos, y volvemos otra vez a la oración eucarística. 
porque justamente ahí ocurrió el encuentro que el ladrón bueno contempló al maestro y el maestro contempló a el ladrón bueno. Es que Jesús me mira y yo lo miro. Hermano y hermana, esta noche, a través de esta enseñanza, el Señor nos invita a arrepentirnos de corazón, a hacer un examen de conciencia y de sacramentos de conciliación, para que podamos volver a sentirnos libres, alegres, felices de que somos parte del pueblo de Dios y que Dios nos quiere perdonar. Y gracias a Dios que nos ha dado un instrumento y ese sacerdote para darnos la solución y volver a comenzar. Y para que su Espíritu Santo esté siempre sobre nosotros para la eternidad. Una vez más, dijo el varón bueno, Señor, acuérdate de mí como estás en preso tu paraíso. Y le dijo, de esta noche te aseguro, estarás conmigo en el paraíso. Acuérdate de mí cuando llegues a tu reino. De esta noche estarás conmigo en el paraíso. Dios me lo bendiga a todos. God bless you. Bendiciones. God bless. Dios te bendiga. Buenas noches.